I am Manga, this is a sloth, and you are at the wrong place on the internet. What is up human beings, it's Manga Sloth here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the reads for the month of August. I'm gonna tell you what we read this month. I'm not gonna show you everything. I pick out some things that are different and cool, so you're not seeing the same things on every single channel. I'm gonna break things down, let you know what I thought, let you know about the manga a little bit so you get an idea. If it sounds cool, you might wanna read it or like it or get it or talk about it in the comments but before we do that like always if you enjoy my content if you could take a second to like comment subscribe it means a lot to me it does so much for the channel and like always come talk to me in my discord link down below and also like always if you're buying manga from right stuff you can use my affiliate link down below it helps out the channel but more importantly it helps out you because it all goes back to the channel and for giveaways and getting manga to the people. Enough chit chat, let's get into the manga. All right, folks, here we are up close and personal with the manga sloth hands, the beautiful hand model, the manga sloth. I'm trying out the shelf method where you are in front of my shelf and I put the manga up here and we talk about it and have a nice conversation. Let me know if you like this way or you just want to see my beautiful face 24 7. This way does allow you to get up a little cl more close and personal with the manga and check it out. So as you can see on myself I got some Kuma 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 Bears and I have read a Kuma 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 Bear this month. I have been enjoying this series quite a bit. A lot more than I first thought I would. It is so wholesome in a way, but also it's also cool enough and interesting enough to keep me wanting more. And I'll be completely honest, when these enter the house, they get read very quick. They don't hit the to be read pile and sit there for days, weeks, or months like some other things. These get read quick because they are quick reads, but they are also very uh, almost wholesome slice of life sort of feeling even though it's not that this is an izakai and i'm getting more well versed in the izakai genre and i'm picking up more and more of them and i'm kind of cherry picking them i'm not just grabbing each and every one that's new and buzzing i'm kind of picking ones that are enough different that it doesn't annoy me because there's so many and so many are so similar not saying they aren't good but they're just so similar this one is just crazy it follows this girl in a bear costume and it's more of a video game world that she's in and she's in this overpowered bear suit that makes her look funny and all her moves and everything she does is just bear related she has bear summons these are her bears that she summons yeah, we're so close to another one this in the background is like a bear house there's her bear summons gives you that new world izakai feel but it's just different and feels nice and i like it and we can just stick it right there next up is grand blue fantasy this is volume number seven but i read like four through seven and this is complete now i finished this series i gotta say i'm not super impressed with the series it's definitely it was good it's definitely good in ways but it's also i'm not even sure the word for it maybe like mm, forgettable it feels forgettable if that makes sense i feel like give me another couple months and i will almost remember nothing from the series it just didn't dig deep down with me uh, this is based on a game. I have never played the game, so I'm sure if you played the game or you know anything more about Grand Blue Fantasy, it will be more appealing to you. I feel like this series, it definitely felt like it was rushed because obviously, uh, you know, you're jamming a whole game and all this story into seven volumes, but it also felt like things were missing. Like I was waiting for some battle to happen between like this black knight in armor and this uh, this lady and this uh, little girl who was also like one of the main characters in the series that could control these beasts in ways and it just never happened. Uh, besides that, this is a good series. All that being said, do not be put off by what I'm saying. It is seven volumes. It is good and I gotta tell you, the art is tippity top notch the shading the characters the battles were sweet it was all really really nice looking so definitely worth a pickup just maybe for me 
it wasn't the greatest thing I have read. Next, we have Naruto 72. Now, everyone pay attention, because this is extremely important. I'm sure you're all wondering, Manga Sloth, why in the fudge sickle are you reading Naruto? You told us multiple times that you weren't going to read your manga, you already watched the anime, blah blah blah. Well, I didn't read any of Naruto this month. And that's that. Joking aside, my wife read Naruto. She watched some of the anime and she read a bunch of it. I don't think she ever reached Shippuden. Uh, Shippuden, if that's uh, how you're if that's how you pronounce it correctly. So she actually never finished the series. So we own all of Naruto, and uh, no joke, people, she read all 72 volumes in. August. She read multiple other things too. She kind of powerhoused through Naruto. Now she doesn't always do that and uh, obviously me and her do not read that much and that fast. But she kind of wanted to get through it and kind of prioritize it big time so she could get it over with and read her other stuff since she never finished it. Now obviously I'm not going to show you all 72 volumes of Naruto but she did read them all and it uh, just makes it more crazy when you realize you know she has a career where she works 50 plus hours a week so in her spare time she was reading lots of Naruto. Just so you know on reading levels she is a better and faster reader than I am. She can get through stuff way quicker than me and retain it all. She is way better at getting through a to be read pile than I am. She loved it. She loved it. It's kind of hard to go wrong with uh, Naruto. It is a staple. It's definitely not the greatest series ever made but it is definitely a staple that I think most if not all people should own and at least cherish because it is a shonen worth celebrating. Next up is number five. I picked this one out to show you because I read it this month and I love this. This number five here, doesn't that look sweet? It almost looks like an oil spill. If you ever see uh, oil on the ground or mixed with water or something, it gets this uh, like tie dye-ish kind of feel. That is sweet, I love it. And the art style on this series is crazy. I love these covers, they look great. But inside, the art is very different. It's good in its own way, but some, but I could see it being kind of a little bit of a turnoff for some people, depending on what you like, because some scenes seem a little sketchy. Not that they're not finished, you can definitely tell it's an art style, but it seems kind of sketchy and you kind of gotta pay attention a little bit in, in some certain scene so you know what's going on. But I did enjoy this first volume, I'm gonna collect more of it, and uh, it follows uh, this guy you see right here on the cover. He is number five and there's nine of these, I forget the name now, they're guardians or something. He's hunting down all his other numbers that he was in this league or this thing with, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the exact words, and he's hunting them down like he's hunting down number nine, number eight, number seven, you know, he's hunting down those people, and uh, it's pretty cool, and it's unraveling, and there's a lot of mystery and things that I want to know what's going on and why he's doing these specific things exactly, and all this extra stuff, so it's it was pretty good and I enjoyed it. Next up is Mujirushi, if I'm saying that correctly. Now, we're going to take a complete turn here and this doesn't happen often anymore because I get so many great recommendations and I have more of a open mind when it comes to manga. I don't just read shoujos, I don't just read shonens or seinens or certain types of manga. I'll pretty much read anything as long as it's a good book, I will enjoy it. But this one, I just did not enjoy. Does not happen often. Most of the time I can give something middle of the road or like meh or like whatever, not that great, not memorable, blah, blah, blah. This, I just didn't like. I just did not like this. I read the whole thing. I understand what they were doing and going for in this volume. And this is a single volume. So it's a story that is a complete story all in itself. They only have so much time to play with something. Now, Urasawa, we know him, we love him, his works are great. This one just wasn't 
for me. I'm not saying it's terrible and that you won't like it because there's plenty of people who love things that I don't like and who don't like things that I like. There's not one thing on earth that everyone completely loves. And this is one of those things that I do not like. It was a bit of a weird story about a girl and her father who tried to end up uh, stealing a piece of artwork for someone and making some money on it and he's a forger and then kind of like replacing it and stuff and then it mixes it mixed in some weird things there was some funny points uh, as you can see here there is a ton of people with a mask of what seems to be someone who is a crusty Cheeto. They make some jokes in that regard in it, and they're, and they're funny, but the story just doesn't hit home. But you may enjoy it, it's a one shot, so if you just want something to read and you're not really in the mood for something specific, this could be a good read for you. Next up we have Sensor from Junji Ito. Another one of his little horror series, that a little a combination of short stories that all kind of combine together as one. This was all right. It definitely was not my favorite. I think, to be completely honest, I think Uzumaki was the only one I can say was above middle of the road for me. Probably the only one that I will ever recommend to anybody if they're talking about horror or Junji Ito uh, specifically. This one also falls into the middle of the road it was a fine read uh, you know there was a couple things that were kind of creepy and that's what you're looking for uh, nothing really scary or suspenseful feeling just like always you definitely don't know where it's gonna go or what's gonna happen but uh, another middle of the road volume uh, not very impressed but I will say I am impressed with the hardcover the hardcover looks great this, uh, this shiny gold here in the spine. That is definitely a plus. That is something that is uh, top notch. Next we got that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I'm just gonna touch base on this for a second. I read I read like volume five through 16 of this. So I read like 10 or 11 volumes of this and uh, I'm hooked. I mean, this is good. This is a great Isekai. I'm enjoying it. I really didn't know how I would feel about the main character being a slime though he has uh, the ability to be in human form and uh, the art is uh, pretty good battles are cool it's really nice seeing how it's evolving and i love the politics and the like world building the city building rimaru the slime is building his own like little country and it's all-inclusive for monsters and stuff which are not uh, well in most places in the world I complained a little bit about the novel portions at the end and I got some reasons and insights into why they're there and they make sense I just feel a little gypped after 16 volumes of a chunk of it being novel portions you know you would technically only have 13 14 volumes so they're definitely making some extra money on that next up here's one that is pretty sweet uh, for the kid I saw in my dreams these are all hardcovers so it's pretty cool this is an ongoing series I think six are out now and seven is on the way this is by the creator of erased if you've ever watched or read that I actually am trying to get through erased right now I have read one and two and I can't find number three anywhere for at least a reasonable price so I'm kind of stuck in limbo on that but I do have four and five of it and uh, if you know erased it has his art style and uh, his characters look similar and I'm gonna tell you right now if you have read erased and enjoyed it I'm sure you will read and enjoy this also but I will say the main two characters the female and the male look so similar to the two in erased they almost were copy and pasted over now they have different personalities they do and act differently so it's definitely definitely not the same don't worry about that but they are just so similar it is crazy but this series it follows this kid who has a twin brother and 
they can feel each other's pain and sometimes th see through each other's eyes. It's sort of like a twin power, but not really like an ability. They can't really call on it or something like that. The kid's family was murdered and he grew up and his little brother is missing and he's thought to be dead and he's trying to find them. And he is trying to uncover the secrets of the person who killed his family and his uh, attacked his brother and to see if his brother's still alive and all this stuff. So it's really cool so far. I'm enjoying it. And we got Demon Slayer number 23. And that is the end of Demon Slayer, folks. Demon Slayer is no more. This is the final volume. And I read it. It's a little chunkier. It's finished now. I won't get into too much detail because it's a whole series. All I read was this one this month and I'm showing it off because it's now finished. And I'm gonna give a slight opinion of the series in whole. And my opinion is Demon Slayer is middle of the road in my opinion. It's not that great. It's not super great, but it's also not bad. But also to me, in the shonen world, it really can't compete, in my opinion, with the seven, eights, and nines. That being said, I bought all of Demon Slayer, I read all of Demon Slayer, and I plan on keeping all my Demon Slayer. So that shows you that it's not bad enough that I just want to pitch it, and I do want to keep it, because I did enjoy Demon Slayer as a read. The the ending I felt was okay. It did feel rushed and we knew that was going to happen and we do know that he redid some things in the end of this and I don't know how much he redid but we know now that it was even more rushed or uh, more unfinished or unpolished and he kind of went back and fixed it up we'll say. But Demon Slayer is definitely worth a read. If you're looking for a shonen, I don't know if I would pick this as your first. There is a lot of better things out there but if you like this type of thing then go for it i'm sure most people will get something out of this because it is enjoyable and with that folks we are done with the reading log let me know down below what you read this month and if there's anything that i read that you felt differently about or you want to chat with me about let me know if you enjoyed the content remember to subscribe and come chat with me in my discord and also get Hit that bell notification on because I got some super sweet stuff coming up and you are not going to want to miss it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.